Hi everybody! I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing a follow-up session for Johannes, another 15-minute session, and we're going to continue where we left off, exploring bringing into balance that twin part of himself. Um, if you haven't seen the other two sessions, I'm going to put links out there. It's so worth watching. And there's a few other things that Johannes wanted me to look into just to see if we could fit it in on the time. Okay. All right, we're going to continue to work on opening the third eye. Um, wanting um, a request to look at uh, a nose block, seeing energies, auras. Um, I see energy sometimes, a small part of the aura. Possibly it can be opened up more. Um, wanting me to look into higher chakra blocks, self-awareness, love, passion, being in the now blocks. And the last thing. Um, I would like you to look at my brain receptors, serotonin, dopamine, etc. And you have been working on all of this in your own world, and you're wanting to see if I've noticed some improvements, even uh, communicating with this twin part of yourself. And what is the portal between worlds, okay? So you're working on that as well. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and relax here. I'm super excited to see see what we discover today. Okay. So I'm just really collecting myself here with all of your goals, everything that you're wanting to explore. I mean, my the one thing that's going to help you the most is finding a way to bring this whole twin thing into balance. Once that comes into balance, it's going to give you a new edge to everything that you are. But Let's just see where spirit takes me, okay? Okay. I will say this is extremely jarring on my throat and my third eye, and it looks like pepper in the air. It's very overwhelming for me to look at it. Um, it definitely looks like another world. It's like I'm standing on an asteroid. This is also very overwhelming for my emotional gut here. So whatever this is in your energy field, uh, it's a very severe imbalance. <laughs> and it seems like you put pepper in here. I'm not sure, but there's like black spots all over. It's not ash. It's literally like pepper. Yeah, you've definitely been working on things, but it seems, it seems almost like um, the idea of breaking down a structure, but to demolish it um, is part of the process, but this is, it's almost um, doing it in a way that is, you're, I can tell that you're very excited, you're ready to move forward, you're ready for this, but it's sort of like blowing something up um, without uh, really transforming it with love, accepting it as it is, and then letting it go, which then it just simply disappears. So you don't have to get the jackhammer out on the problem to just break that problem up so it can disperse. Really, you just get rid of the tools and you just come to peace with it. The challenge with coming to peace with your situation is, is because it's it's not something that you're going to be able to use your human mind. It's, it's not something you could work with with your human mind because it, it literally is going to go right over your head. We cannot use logic to make sense of this because it's an energy thing and it's, a, it's above a 3D mind if you want to put it that way. Um, all right, I'm going to actually put back together everything that you broke apart. Um, that, that literally is what I, I need to do. And I will say there's so much sadness and grief here. <sighs> uh, you're, you're, uh, what feels like, um, desperation to be done with this and, uh, grief or sadness that uh, I'm not putting it all back the way that it was but trust me on this we're going to we're going to release this together in a healthy way okay <laughs> okay all right you you're throwing razor blades i mean you're basically uh distorting all the frequencies and what you're doing is creating um like a frequency fence in order to um evaporate me like in order to like zap me 
That's what you're doing right now. So I'm just letting you vent. It's a lot of pent up hurt in here, okay? And this really isn't on the conscious level what you, you mean to be doing. You don't mean to do this, but this is your soul's personal style of venting and it's, it's a lot of frustration going on here. So you're just doing this. And I'm not necessarily convinced that this is entirely interconnected with the twin issue, but something new that you're facing. So one thing that, um, that Johannes has mentioned to me is that there's a few times where he really opened up to being entirely himself and he's not certain why, but there's something about his energy that creates, um, overwhelmingness to the people around him. So he shuts his energy then down so he doesn't overwhelm people to the point that people start to scream. So he, so this actually reminds me or, or is, is sending an energy memory into me that tells me this is somewhat interconnected to, um, to shutting yourself down. Because when you tell me this, that, that being yourself is terrifying or overwhelms people and now you have to not be yourself you have to entirely shut down yourself what can you imagine how that would feel you know now now we understand why you're blocking your third eye and why you're blocking all of your senses why you're blocking all this stuff down and it feels like that was that's just something that you need to take baby steps in order to to truly comprehend yourself and to open up in a in a way that is a joyful experience for everybody, which is your intention in the first place. You want it to be a joyful experience for yourself and for all the people around you. You want to be loved no different than anybody else. So this place here, it's just, it's a basically an explosive energy of all the hurt and the frustration that you've been through. And it's not necessarily a, all about the twin. It's about your life and it's very distorting in here and it's all venting right now. It's healthy, okay? But it's also uh, it's also chaotic. I'm just going to continue to let this come out. I tell you, you can blow up as much stuff as you want. You can rip me apart, whatever you want to do to just vent all of the anger out. I mean, you want to rip whole universes apart. Like you, you show me fabric, this is the universe and you just want to rip it apart. Like, like, uh, you know, if you were the Hulk, like you become the Hulk and you rip your clothes apart. Like <laughs> that's kind of what you're showing me here. That's how much hurt is inside you. And, 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 and it's also, I mean, you're not an angry human being, but you have a lot of hurt inside you from this lifetime, other experiences as well. This isn't just this life. And I will say that you can't let go. You can't just simply stop now. Like I'm letting you vent, but now you're becoming attached to venting and you're just starting to get, it's getting out of control. So you need to just stop venting. So I'm stopping you and I'm, I'm stopping time. So everything you've created is suspended in time. And I say no more because you're getting addicted now to the venting process. It's becoming unhealthy and you have a very chaotic side to your soul. We all do. We have dark and light sides, but your chaotic side, your soul is also very close to the surface of your human identity, which is interesting because this twin in a parallel universe is also very close to your human identity. It's very interesting. Just relaxing this part of you on down. As you can see, we're looking at basically a major puzzle that was just all the pieces were just thrown into the air. And that's what it looks like in here. I'm, at, I'm going to do what I said that I was going to do, and I'm putting everything back the way that it was. And we're going to start from square one again. And you're going to like it. When I do this, it's almost like a torture. It's like taking somebody who's lived 500 lives and putting them into a, a baby. They can't, they can't express all the ideas. They can't walk themselves to the locations. They can't do anything. 
So, or putting uh, all, like a person who's lived 500 lives that, that remembers everything. 500 lives isn't that many lives. But imagine if you could remember all of that, those times, and then putting it into somebody who's so, totally paralyzed from the, like the whole body is they can't speak, they can't do anything, they can't express anything, they, they can't move. So you're saying that when I bring it all back into place, that would be the equivalent of taking somebody who has this much awareness and putting it into somebody who can't even talk or blink or move. And I say, just get over yourself. <laughs> You need to come to peace with things and you're not ever going to come to peace with things by blowing things up. There is a need for venting here, but the venting even becomes an addiction. And so we have to find a way to to know how, know when enough is enough. Enough venting is enough venting. When it's okay for things to come back to normal and it feels that terrible. It's actually not hurting you at all. For some reason you you find this to be the most terrifying, imprisoning thing I could possibly do to you. But that's your issue. This is not actually hurting you at all. This is actually bringing you into balance. So the next piece of the puzzle here is some part of you, when I bring you into actual balance, you feel sick to your stomach about it. You don't want to be in balance in this way. You don't like it. And you can imagine like any addict, if, if they're addicted to heroin, let's say, and the heroin is their balance, this is what I need to stay balanced. And then you take that away from them, bringing them into true balance is a nightmare. That's a nightmare. That's terrible. That's the worst thing you possibly do to me. That's what this is. I'm bringing you into balance and you're freaking out on me because you're addicted to calamity and chaos, right? This, this part of you boy, you're all over the place. It's actually pretty cool because I know I'm kind of starting and stopping. There's just a lot here to analyze, but this is actual progress. For one, I can tell you're working on yourself and it's, and it's jumbling up the system. So things are breaking apart and we're rattling the, the, the cages. We're ruffling the feathers of your energetic balance, which is going to help you come into a new state of being. So in a way, this, this chaos needs to happen. And this chaos also needs to come to peace with a new version of balance. So we're making progress, but this is way out of control. So for me to, to really bring this into balance is going to actually help you substantially. You are... Are you doing a good job of it? Yeah, you're you are, but we you need some help in the process here to to really come into I mean this there's so much going on. It would be very hard to do this with a human mind. Okay. I'm going to focus. <sighs> Putting it all back together still. It's uh, horrifying. You're still screaming at me. You feel bewildered. You feel like nothing will ever change. As in, you'll never get to that point of true freedom and, and balance. And that's not true at all. And it's funny because when I bring all this stuff back together again, it looks like a giant snowman in the universe. <laughs> it's cute, actually. <laughs> three balls, three spheres. One big one, one little bit smaller, and one smaller, like a, like a snowman. I'm just putting a happy face. Like, I'm just making it look like a total snowman, but it's three spheres, and they're w w whitish color. But I'm just making a legit snowman because it just... <laughs> I need that for my own personal reason. I'm putting smiley face and a nose and and doing that for your your spheres <laughs> to make your spheres happy. <laughs> and for some reason, this big um, happy snowman in the universe um, in instantly brings you into sobbing. Because 
it's smiling at you and you are getting further away from the northern lights place where your twin is and the desperation to get out of there you are actually finding a way out and it's happening through you the human but it's also creating a lot of chaos and uh, part of the twin is looking at the snowman and it just brings so many tears because you're still not there yet and that is a symbol of happiness and freedom but still not there yet Okay, so as the snow melts, there's some sort of mechanical being on the inside, like a giant robot the size of a planet inside all the snowmen. And this isn't a good thing either. Because even Terminator can kind of think for himself on a level. This is entirely programmed and the frequencies that it emits are really barfy. Again, it reminds me of that sort of frequency fence vapor wall that you're creating to basically vaporize me kind of thing. So he's not vaporizing anything, but he is creating very harmful frequency waves. But I'm just going to slow everything down. I just stop that. Because in a weird way, your inner essence finds this, this to be fascinating. So now we're, we're finding our way back to the addictions. Which, these are just simply parts of yourself. What is the most interesting part of you? Is it the giant robot, the frequency fence abilities, the vaporizing? Is it the imprisonment in a parallel universe? Is it, you know, what is it actually? What if you were just a simple man? Couldn't even, you don't have any talent at all. You can't draw, you can't, you have no athletic ability, you have horrible, you know, I, I mean... Let's say you have like literally everything going against you in a weird way and you had no gifts. What if that was the most beautiful and most special you've ever been? Because really to conquer your calamity is to do the complete opposite and to be at peace with the complete opposite of it. So I'm sharing this energy in your spiritual atmosphere to balance all of these frequencies out because you're already starting to worship the giant robotic thing and that's actually not doing any you any good at all. Not doing anything any good because that's not really who you are. I put this simple man into the heart of this robot and now watch how powerful love is. Because destruction is pathetic. Destruction has no power. It's just an illusion. It's like death. Is death a real event? On one level you could say yes, but in an infinite universe, you know it was always an illusion. So destruction is an illusion that helps us continue to move through um, all the lifetimes, etc. And have various experiences. So it, there's beauty in it. But in the end, the only true way to bring destruction into a new essence um, within itself, so the death of destruction, which is also an illusion, um, is with love, which transforms everything. So love and destruction are important, but when the destruction, uh, destructive energy doesn't have a purpose anymore, and yet we're still fueling it as interesting, um, it's already played its part. So that too needs to die. And it doesn't ever die. It just transforms with love. And now you can see that this robotic thing that wants to distort all the frequency waves and control everybody, that's not very special if you ask me. It's the simple man. And I put that into the heart of this robotic nightmare and watch it deactivate. Zero power. Hmm. And I will say that brings a lot of warmth to your heart. And I start to see this robot um, to break apart. And I start to feel, again, emotion about this. 
because really this robot again is a reflection of how you're like screaming to get out to the point that you're creating these illusions of chaos I can't say much more than this. I mean, I really want to go further, but I just literally can't. <sighs> I'm going to bring everything that I saw again into a new version of, of alignment, okay? So that you can feel centered. That pepper stuff was horrible to step into. You created that. That calamitous world of explosions and breaking things up um, is really ch your attempt to break down the old structure, which is actually a good attempt because we're working with new energy. Even though it's creating a lot of distortion and um, disalignment that's actually an unhealthy, um, but then bringing it back together, right? We're starting to work on the emotional aspects of this whole thing. <sighs> starting to come aware of how beautiful simplicity can be. What any human being would define as weakness could be the most beautiful and the strongest energy anybody could work with. It could be admirable, okay? And then we put that love into all of this and it again starts to deactivate it because that's how we truly dissolve this thing is with love. You don't have to break it apart. Just simply love. Continuing to bring it into alignment, okay? Literally. I'm actually taking out all of your thoughts and I'm releasing them because they're just clouding your truth. I mean, it's got to come from feelings. Otherwise, your mind is going to cloud your judgment. It's got to come from feelings. What if you couldn't think at all? What if you didn't have a mind to try to make sense of any of this? Mind is just trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together again. But what if all you had to work with was your heart? How would you put the puzzle together with your heart? How would you come to peace with yourself? Okay, that's all I can say, Johannes. <laughs> you will feel an energy shift from this, and it sh should help you feel more peaceful and relaxed. You're, you are doing a good job, and this is a very unique circumstance that I don't run into literally ever. <laughs> so <laughs> it's very interesting. But this will help you feel brighter within your heart and freer because it's the love that sets you free. It's love, not mind. <sighs> okay, that's all I can say. Thank you for the follow-up sessions. It's a blessing and an honor to get to work with your beautiful soul. And thank you for sharing too, because I'm sure a lot of people are very curious to see how your sessions continue to move along. It's very interesting. Okay. And for those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Hope you all have a great day.